and he'll talk about bounds on achievable rates of sparse quantum codes over the quantum erasure channel. Okay. Um, I work uh, with Gilles Zemmour on quantum LDPC codes or sparse quantum codes and I will talk about the performance of this family of codes. Uh, to begin, why do we study this kind of codes? We have a quantum channel which introduces errors and uh, and we use error correcting codes to transmit information. The central correction in information theory is the determination of the capacity of the channel. It is the highest amount of information that we can transmit punishing error probability. Therefore, we want a high rate. And as we saw this morning, we want an efficient decoding <coughs> and algorithm, an efficient decoding and encoding algorithm. Otherwise, error accumulate, and we cannot compute if error accumulate. To have this fast decoding, we use sparse codes. They are defined by matrix of low weight, by equation of low weight. And therefore, this gives us an efficient decoding algorithm. But in compensation, we know for a classical sparse code that we are a bit below the capacity of the channel. And we will prove that this is the same thing for the quantum case. In the quantum setting, we cannot achieve the capacity with quantum sparse codes or quantum LDPC codes. Another advantage of this kind of codes have small uh, stabilizer, stabilizer which are the identity almost everywhere. When we have a typical error in a class, in a degeneracy class, we have several typical errors and therefore we use degeneracy. This is necessary when we want to obtain good quantum codes for the devolarizing channel, for example. I will begin by a proof of the capacity of the quantum erasure channel only for stabilizer codes. We will prove using combinatorial arguments that uh, we have at most achievable rate uh, 1 minus 2p for the quantum erasure channel of probability p. After we'll obtain using this new bound uh, that the sparse quantum code don't achieve capacity and finally, I will talk about an intercalation theory. Using quantum information, we obtain an upper bound on the critical probability in percolation theory for particular families of graphs. What do we know about the quantum erasure channel? Its capacity is 1 minus 2p. That was proved in 97 by Bennett, De Vincenzo, and Smolin. And the proof is based on no, the no cloning theorem. Therefore, we cannot improve this upper bound for a particular family of codes, for sparse codes, because it doesn't depend on the properties of the codes. Now, to begin, what is stabilizer codes? Uh, we saw that we need a stabilizer group defined by air independent generators and the code will be the fix, the set of fixed points of the stabilizer group. The rate of the code will be n minus r over n. And we know that we have a natural measurement associated with a stabilizer code. It is uh, the syndrome. It is the vector of f2 to the r, which is a one, if and which is zero, if and only if. Uh, the error commute with the ice stabilizer, the ice generator. Uh, using this definition, we can see that we can measure the syndrome. And if two errors differ in a stabilizer, then they have the same effect on the quantum code, and therefore we can correct them in the same way. The quantum erasure channel. It has several equivalent definitions. Here we will use, which is 
well adapted to the stabilizer formalism. It is based on poly operator. We consider that a qubit is erased independently with probability p, and an erased qubit is subjected to a random poly error, i, x, y, or z, with probability of Carter, and the raised position is known. Therefore, on n qubits, we denote by a vector of f2 to the n, the erased position. This vector is 1 if and only if the i qubit is erased. And we know this erased vector, this erased position, and we know that in this case, the uh, state, the quantum state, is subjected to a random poly error, which is included in the erased position. We can yet measure, measure the syndrome of the error it occurs. And the question is, with the knowledge of the erased position and the syndrome, what is the error it occurs? What is the most probable error? We will see this on an example, we consider this stabilizer matrix. We have three independent generators. It defines a quantum code of parameters 5, 2. And we take a random, we take an erasure. Here the second and the third qubit are erased. How many errors can occur and how many of them can we correct? We have two erased components and on each component, we have four different possible errors, i, x, y, or z, that give us four square different possible errors. How many of them can it? <coughs> to correct an error, we measure, uh, we know the array's position, we measure, we measure the syndrome, and given the syndrome, we associate a class of errors. <coughs> Therefore, how many different syndromes are there. We are interested of, in syndrome of heroes which are included in the erased position. Therefore, only the, the blue matrix, H E, the, the erased matrix, uh, is necessary. And when we look at this matrix, we can see that the third row is exactly the product of the two first row. That means that the syndrome in the, the third component of the syndrome will depend on the two first component. For the two first component, we have two choice. The syndrome will be zero or one. Therefore, we have two to the two syndromes of error included in this erased position. We have the number of syndromes. And given a syndrome, how many errors can we correct? How many errors are in the same degeneracy class? and included in the eraser. Uh, to see this, we look at the red part. If two errors are in the same degeneracy class, two errors included in the eras position, they differ in a stabilizer, which is included in the blue position, the eras positions. That means that this stabilizer corresponds to a relation between the row of the red matrix. In this case, we can see that the first and the third row are the same in the red part. This gives us the non-trivial relation. And this gives us two stabilizer, the identity and this product of the two row, which are included in the erased position. Therefore, in each degeneracy class, we have two errors that we can correct in the same way. We can, therefore, correct two to the two times two errors in among the, the four square possible errors. Therefore, we cannot correct this erasure. And we can repeat this argument for a general erasure we obtain the number of correctable erasure in function of the rank of the submatrix HE, the small submatrix, the matrix of the erased component, and the submatrix of the non-erased component, the large submatrix H. 
Using this, we obtain a lower bound on the error probability. And therefore, we can see that uh, the maximum achievable rate of a family of stabilizer codes uh, is uh, below 1 minus 2p minus g of p, where the function g uh, depends on this uh, difference of rank of the, the large submatrix, a large random submatrix, and a small random submatrix. This gives us a bound which is below 1 minus 2p. We recover the bound on the capacity of the capacity of the quantum erasure channel, which come from the cloning theorem. Uh, but only from combinatorial arguments. And moreover, for general stabilizer codes, we cannot say something better, but for a sparse, if we have a family of sparse codes, then we will prove that this function g of p uh, can be bounded, and we are here strictly below the capacity. Now we will estimate this function for a sparse matrix. We take a random submatrix, HE. Generally, we will have PN columns. And when P grows, we arrive to a square matrix. In this position, for this P, we have a square matrix. For a general matrix, it will, uh, this matrix, HE, will, will, has, will have almost full rank. And we cannot say something for the bound. But for a particular matrix, a sparse matrix, we have rows of low weight. In the we have rows of weight 3. And in the other coordinate, it is the identity. Therefore, we have a non-trivial, non we have a non-zero probability to have a null row in the matrix HE, such in this matrix. And we can enumerate the number of null rows, the expected number of null rows in the random submatrix, we obtain a function which is linear in the length. This given, this gives us a non-trivial lower bound on the function g, and therefore, this proves that LDPC codes, LDPC quantum codes, don't achieve capacity. And in fact, we can improve this bound if we consider different case, when we have in the same column 2z, we have for rows of, of weight 1 in the submatrix. We have a relation between the two rows. This tells us that the row of the submatrix will not be full. The rank of the submatrix will not be full. And therefore, we obtain an improvement of the preceding the preceding case using null rows. And we can continue using the relation included in two columns, three columns, etc. Uh, this gives us a more accurate bound. And this bound looks like to this. We cannot see anything, but we obtain a bound on achievable rates of CSS codes of type 2M. That means that the, column, the columns are rate 2 and the rows of rate M. There are M non-identity coordinate on the stabilizer, on the generators. And if we have sufficiently large uh, distance in the X part and the Z part, we obtain a bound on the, an upper bound on the rate. Uh, to see what is this bound, for uh, code of type 2.8, we have the bound of the capacity of the quantum erasure channel in red. With this kind of code, we know that the rate is at most, uh, at least 1 minus 2 L over 1 minus 2 times 2 over 8. This gives us uh, 0 0.5. Therefore, using the capacity, we can say that the maximum erasure threshold is 0 0.25. And using the blue curve, which is a curve when we consider only the neural rows in the proceeding, we obtain something a bit better. And 
in the black curves, we consider the relation included in 1, 2, 3, till 30 columns. This gives us a bound which is uh, something like 0 0.2, which is clearly better than 0 0.25. For the tolerable erasure threshold, uh, I will pass the application in percolation theory. Uh, to conclude, we obtain the same thing for uh, CSS codes of type LM. We use uh, hypergraphs, pr property of hypergraphs, to obtain this, and we can do the same thing for stabilizer codes. Two open question. Can we do the same thing for the depolarizing channel? Can we have a new way to obtain, to approach the capacity of the depolarizing channel? And the, boon, the bound is better for, for CSS codes than stabilizer codes. Does that mean that we can construct better stabilizer codes for the research threshold? Thank you for your attention. Yeah. Are there questions? So, so where in your proof did you use the fact that H should satisfy the symplectic scalar product? That H? Uh, yeah, like basically that your stabilizer uh, operators should commute with each other. So H should satisfy the symplectic scalar product. Uh, we don't need the, f the commutation relation. For uh, submatrix here, we don't have the commutation relation between the row, it's right. I think it's this relation. But we can, we can define the rank of the submatrix. It will be the rank of the row space without the commutation relation. And we don't need the commutation relation to obtain an information about the number of syndromes and the number of uh, of error included in the erasure. Yeah. One last question. <laughs> or was this the last question? Looks like that. Uh, I guess everybody's hungry. There is a final announcement from the organizers. And thanks again for all the speakers.